Danny Flexen here for seconds out. Delighted to be joined by Cole Greaves. Cole, how are you? Yeah, I'm good, thanks, Danny. How are you, mate? I'm very good, thank you. Um, your fighter, David Avanesian, has got that big world title fight he's craved for so long against Terence Crawford. Uh, very tough challenge, of course, but you've been preparing for some time for him to fight either Spence or Crawford, I imagine. So tell us, I guess, first of all, how the fight got over the line. Yeah, well, obviously, uh, David was over preparing for um, for his European title defence uh, on the 19th of November in Telford against John Miguez, his mandatory. Um, so it was all set training for that. We had about four weeks together for that fight, um, getting ready. Um, and then out of the blue, Neil rang me and said, um, it's looking like we've got the Crawford fight. He said... Uh, so I think we had about 24 hours, 48 hours to, to get it over the line and he managed to get it over the line. Him and Frank Warren in the unbelievable opportunity for us and David never hesitated, took the fight straight away and um, now we're here, ready for it. And have you spent much time, I mean, everyone watches Crawford as a fan, but have you spent much time studying him because you knew ultimately David would probably have to face either him or Errol Spence? Yeah, I've watched a lot of Crawford over the years. I can remember watching him back in the day when... When he was fighting Ricky Burns, I was at that mm. fight. So you're talking many years. Um, but I mean, he's, he's come on leaps and bounds since then. He's gone through the weights and just beat every obstacle in front of him with no problem really at all. I mean, he's on a good roll himself. He stopped 10 of his last 11, 11 opponents. And we're under no illusions. It's a, it's a big ask. It's a big task. But David's quietly confident, um, a bit like he was with Josh Kelly. So, so you never know. I mean... David's got to be at his very, very best. Um, and obviously, I'm, I'm sure he will be. What about the level of opposition going from the guys David's been fighting? They're all good fighters, but he's getting them out of there in dominant fashion early on as well. To someone like Crawford, who best win in the world, even if David pulls off the upset, he's probably not going to bang him out in two or three rounds. No, I mean, listen, it's, it's a, a big jump in levels. We, we know that. But, I mean, David's only been beating who's been put in front of him. I mean, obviously, he's fought some good fighters over the years. I mean, he's, he's beat Shane Mosley. He boxed Lamont Peterson and, and Kavalowskis, and he wasn't his best then. He's, he's come on leaps and bounds since them days. I mean, four and a half years ago, was his last defeat against Kavalowskis. And he's a completely different fighter now. He's got the air of confidence. He's gone in there. I mean, he took apart, took apart, took apart Kerman Lujaraga in, mm. in Bill Barry in front of hostile crowd. I mean, Lujaraga at the time was a phenomenal force, 27 and now I think 23 knockouts. He did a number on him, went back and did a number on him again, this side and side around. So he's got that that confidence around him at the minute. He beat Josh Kelly pretty easily as well, took him apart in six rounds, and he's just dismantled everybody who's been put in front of him. So he's going in there with a lot of confidence, even though it's not been at the level that Crawford's been boxing at. But... I believe David's a better fighter than Sean Porter. I've been looking at that fight and um, Sean Porter gave him problems. I mean, I know Crawford got him out of there in the end, but yeah, I mean, David's looked at that fight as well. We watched it together and, and I believe that David's a far better fighter than Sean Porter. Without giving away too much of the game plan, when you watch the tapes of Crawford, do you see many weaknesses? Not really. He knows how to fight on the outside and the inside. He's very, he's very clever. He's, a, he's, a, he's listen. Fighters like Crawford come around once in a blue moon. I mean, he's a, he's a special talent. We know that. And like I say, David's got to be his ultimate best, and we've got to get Crawford on a bad night. I mean, you got to remember now, Crawford's thirty-five years old. Yet he'll be thirty months since he's gone in the, got in the ring at the time it's fight night with David. And although David hasn't been getting the rounds. Um, you know what I mean? He's he's been he's been active as such, so um, he's been going he's going to be getting good sparring. He's been getting good sparring, so we're, we're getting the rounds in the bank. And um, I mean, fitness and um, is no problem with David at all. I mean, he's going to be on song by fight night. How long before the fight are you planning to go out to the US? Um, I think we're going out ten days before, um, which is about right, really. I mean, obviously, it's very cold in Nebraska, so I've been told. So, um, yeah, we're going to go out 10 days before which we perfect, really. And given where the fight's taking place, is it one of those where, and we, no one really wants to believe this, but where you think it might be wise 
to win if you're going to buy it, knockout or stoppage because it's, it goes the distance. Even if it's close, it's in the judge's hands and it's in his hometown. Yeah, we know that. We know Dave's got to do a number on him. I mean, obviously, it's going to be hard getting a decision out of there. So we're looking at the stoppage. Um, like I say, um, he was, a lot of people's writing us off. A lot of people are uh, dismissing the fight, saying it's a, it's a one-horse race. But I don't believe it is. I mean, I know how good David is. I mean, he's a phenomenal body puncher. And listen, you get in the body off David, no matter who you are, you're going down. And um, that's what we're working on. We've got a good strategy today, good good game plan, and uh, we've got we've got a bit of time, so um, got a bit of time to study to do some more studying of, of Crawford, and we're going to be doing that. Yeah, it's interesting you say that about people writing him off. It, it's kind of gone beyond that, and that people when they're talking about the fight, it seems to be almost a footnote to the fact that Spence Crawford isn't happening, and they the fighters themselves, Spence and Crawford, have gone back and forth about that on social media. And kind of David's talked about almost as a formality or a bit player in that situation. Is there a positive to that, though, in that, A, you've got the resentment, you know, they're writing me off kind of thing, but also he can prepare diligently without too much of the spotlight coming on him? Yeah, definitely. I mean, um, listen, if Crawford ta if Crawford's taking David lightly and think he's just going to be walking the park in a routine win, then he's in for a big shock because I know that Crawford was at that fight when David beat Kavalowskis because I think if David beat Kavalowskis, he'd have, he'd have got a shot at Crawford that time. So, obviously, Crawford was there. And if he thinks David's the same fighter as them days, he's going to be in for a big, big shot because, um, obviously, we can tell with David's last few performances, he's a far different fighter now. He's learned a lot from them defeats. He'd become a different fighter. Back then, he was never really a proper wild weight to me. When he first came to me, I'd have preferred him to box it the light well to super super lightweight as, as it is now and he never really wanted to boil down I mean Eastern Europeans aren't really the type that like boiling down like the English fighters so he wanted to still campaign at well away and he got found out at the high level by um, Peterson and Cavalas because they were just too big for him but now he's built into a solid well away he's strong and he's solid and he's he's, uh, he's walking around a lot heavier now than he used to and um, he's going to get in the in the ring, you know what I mean, at the proper water weight limit from a day before weigh And So um, he's going to be a lot stronger. He's in far better place now mentally as well. And um, like I say, he fancies a job. And when you see people online talking about Spence and Crawford and that not happening rather than the fight that is happening, does it frustrate you? No, not really. Listen, we all... We all want to see the likes of Spence and Crawford fighting. I mean, it's an unbelievable fight, isn't it? I mean, it's very rare you get you get to unify the belts nowadays. I mean, it's a fight that everybody wants to see. But listen, it could be David and Spence. You never know. You never know. It could be them two next. I mean, um, I know he's a big underdog. I know a lot of people aren't giving him a chance. But we're going in there with confidence. We've got enough to lose, everything to gain. And this is a chance to make a name for ourselves, me as a trainer and obviously David as a fighter. I mean, Neil Marsh as a manager has done a fantastic job. We've been all over the world. I mean, we've been together now since 2015. Um, it's been a long time. We've got to know each other very well and um, we work very well together, all of us as a team. And as a trainer, how exciting is it for you, not just to take a fighter like David for a world title shot on a big stage, but to pit your wits against Crawford and his team because he's thought of as a pound-for-pound -pound contender. And now I didn't think he'd ever get much bigger than when we got the opportunity to fight Sugar Shane Mosley. When Neil called me and told me you're fighting Shane Mosley, I was like, wow, this is unbelievable. I mean, they're the sort of fighters you, you look up to and you watch on TV. And you know what I mean? It's like a dream to come true for, for a lad like me to be up against these sort of people. I mean... And a lot of people will be saying the same. I mean, not very often you get a chance to come up against pound for pound boxing greats. Mm -hmm. I mean, when I went over to, to Arizona and obviously David fought Mosley and Roberto Duran was his was his coach at the time, was training Mosley. It was it was like surreal stuff. And, and now we've uh, we've gone one better because we're fighting the current pound for pound or in the top two or three pound for pound fighters in the world and uh, unbeaten in 38 fights. I mean, he's a phenomenal talent, like I say, and to get the opportunity to go up against somebody like this is, is what is what it's all about and what you work hard for all these years. 
Great stuff. And presumably you're working on the boxer show this weekend as well. Yeah, I've done uh, done some of the matching for it. Yeah, I think I've done about four or five of the fights. So I'll be down there at the weekend. Um, yeah, it's a pretty pretty hectic schedule for me. If I'm not in the gym, I'm in the office. So um, it's uh, it's nonstop. Well, I'm glad you found the time to do this in that case. But but also just give us a bit of a rundown. What what can we look forward to on Saturday night? Yeah, I think obviously the uh, Fraser Clark and Sokolowski fight. Everyone's uh, interested in that fight. I mean. Fraser's got a bit of stick of his level of opposition, which as a team and as a matchmaker, it's been no fault of our own. It's just the way things have turned out. Um, I mean, that last opponent was 7-0 with five knockouts. We were told he's going to come in about 17 stone. He walked in at 15 and a half stone like a rabbit in the headlights. So there's not much you can do about that. Um, I know we're coming to a lot of stick for that. But the Bracamonte fight was a good win. Good win for Fraser. And now he's up against Sokolowski, like a man that causes a few upsets. He was a tough, mm -hmm. a tough opposition, and it's a good test for Fraser at this stage of his career. And if he comes through with flying colours, and I mean, even stops Sokolowski, then he's made a big statement. Um, but the fight I'm really looking forward to is uh, Dalton Smith and Casey Benjamin. That's a great fight. It's a great fight. I mean. Um, Donald's a favourite, and rightly so, but you can't write uh, Casey mentioned him off in this one. It's a, it's a cracking fight. Yeah, Dalton Smith looks, you know, better every time I've seen him on TV. And I think a lot of casual fans may know who he is and not so much about Casey Benjamin, even though I think he has been on Channel 5 at least once. Yeah, yeah, he what, has done, yeah. Why is Casey kind of a threat to Dalton Smith? He just, um, I mean, I've, I've done, we've done a lot of sparring with both of them. David Sparda, uh, Donald Smith and, and Casey Benjamin. They're, they're good friends of the team and, and I like them both. Um, but yeah, I mean, he can't write Casey off. He's tough. He's very tough. Um, he's got a lot of bottle, a lot of art and he's got ability. Uh, and I think he might be a little bit bigger than Dalton on the night as well because he's been boxed. He's boxed as big as Walter, even light middle, I think. So um He's a, he's a big, super lightweight, um, Casey is. So, it's going to be uh, Donald's stiffest test by far, I think. And uh, it's a live fight um, and a very good one. And um, it's going to be great to see uh, my old pal Ricky Allen back in the ring as well for the exhibition against Pereira, another boxing legend, one of my favourite fighters. So, it's a fantastic night that's coming up on Sky Sports. Is that something you'd fancy, an exhibition with someone? No, I'm past it now. I'm past it. You're past <laughs> it. You're younger than Ricky. No, I still train and still bits, but no, I don't do any sparring or I ain't sparred for years. Took too many shots back in the day to be taking any now. Well, you're doing pretty well on the business side for someone who's taking a lot of shots. I wouldn't. Yeah, I wouldn't not too, too bad, sure. mate. Not too bad. Yeah, doing all right. Well, I really appreciate you finding time for yeah. us, and um, yeah, very best of luck for for you and David going into this big fight. Thanks, Danny. It means a lot. Appreciate it, mate. Top man. Cheers, mate. You take care.